In an adventure game, you need a map that defines all the locations or rooms and how they're connected together. The connections are defined by the room exits. So the troll room might have an exit on the east that leads to the forest and one on the south that leads to the cave, for example. I'm Hugh and this is the Code with Hugh channel. We've now come to a really interesting point in my adventure game programming course. We are going to start to build the world of the game. Now, before we create an entire map, we need to figure out what sort of objects each room needs to be. Well, I think a room should have a name, such as Troll Room, and I think it would also be useful to have a description. So when a player enters a room and looks around, the game can show a full description of that room. And of course, the room will also need exits. For now, I'll just have four exits, north, south, west and east. I'll need to create many different room objects, so in an object-oriented language, such as C-sharp or Java, the obvious thing I'll need to do first is define a room class, from which room objects can be created. Now this game is eventually going to have a lot of different classes, so I need to start organising them. Otherwise it's going to be a real mess later on. In C-sharp I can group classes together inside a namespace. The nearest Java equivalent is called a package. There are various ways of creating namespaces. This is how I'll do it. First I'll go into my project and I select Add New Folder. I'll give the folder the name of the namespace I want. Well, I'll make that Game Classes. And now I need to create a room class inside that folder. So I right click Add Class. I call this room. And you can see that now this has created the room class in my new namespace. I need now to give it some fields. I'll give it a name and description. These are two strings. And I want four exits. I'll make these ints, int in the uh, directions north, south, west, east, and that's it. That's my basic new room object. Now, until I actually create my map, I won't really know what type of data the exits need to refer to. For now, I assume that they're going to be integers. So. Here in C-sharp is my simple, basic room class. If you want to write this code into your own project, pause this video now. Now let's see how to do that in Java. As always, I'm using NetBeans, but you're free to use another Java IDE. Now in NetBeans, I begin by creating a package called Game Object. So up here I'm in Source Packages, New Java Package. And it prompts me for a name, so I'll call it Game Objects. and click finish. So there's my new package and now I want to create a room so I go into the game object package new Java class call it room finish. This is now inside my game objects package and add some fields. Again start with the strings for name and description. And then I need my four exits. Again, they're going to be ints, integers, public int n, s, w, e. So that's my room class in Java. Now, since these fields, these variables have been declared to be public, I can go ahead and write some code, as you see an example here, to set and get the values of those variables inside a room object. So here I've created a room object, and then I've assigned uh, strings and integers to the various fields. Now, notice that I've also had to import the room class from the game object package in order to create a room. 
and when I run it, let's see if it works, and down in the NetBeans window down here, it shows me that the trial room has exits, uh, north, south, west, and east. That's executing this line here. And here in Visual Studio, this is the equivalent program written in C Sharp. This time I've had to add the game object's namespace uh, in this using statement in order to access the room class. And when I run it, and you can see, again, it shows the troll room exits and the values that I've assigned. So that all seems to work just fine. But I'm not so happy about having all these public variables. It's a good object-oriented practice to hide the data inside objects. The data should only be accessible by calling methods of some sort. Then if someone tries to change the data in a way that I don't want it changed, for example, if they try to pass a zero which might be used to divide some number by zero and that would crash my program, a method can take action to prevent that data being modified and it can return an error message. In Java, I can write a pair of accessor methods to get and set the values of a piece of data. C Sharp provides another way of doing this using properties. I'll explain that in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. To be notified by email whenever I publish a new lesson, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon. Okay, so now time to move on to the next lesson.